Hey guys, uh, my name is Chelsea Walsh and I am the owner of Chelsea Buns Cross Stitch. Um, I think this video has been uh, a really long time coming. I took a huge hiatus, um, reorganized some of my life, I moved houses, uh, this is my new office in the living room space, and um, yeah, so I, and along with that actually I lost my sort of stitching bug, um, I think that's what we all refer to when we go through periods of um, not wanting to stitch or just kind of losing interest. Uh, and it's a, like, it's weird, um, because I love stitching. Uh, I, <laughs> to give you a little bit of backstory, like, I don't think a lot of you really know much about me kind of as a human. So I'm hoping that this video just kind of gives you like a little bit more about me. And, um, if you have a question, just drop it in the comments. Um, I'll leave my email there too, in case you don't want it to be public. And if there are questions uh, worth answering in the next video, I will absolutely do that. Um, but yeah, so just using this kind of as an opportunity for you guys to get to know me a little bit better. Um, but yeah, so I started stitching again, started stitching again. Um, I think I want to say 20, actually that chart over there, 2016. I have a frame piece over there. I'll bring it over in a minute to show you. But 2016 was when I, um, 2015, 2016 is kind of when I got back into. So that what's that five, six, seven years ago now? Oh my God, time goes really fast. <laughs> um, so I got back into it 2015, 2016, but I had kind of grown up, um, I kind of grown up around it. My grandma, for the longest time, um, every time I would go over to her house, it was my dad's mom, every time I would go over to her house, um, she would be stitching. And I was always kind of interested. And I picked it up a few times um, when I was younger. But to be honest with you, the biggest thing that stopped me from continuing to stitch at that time was I hated the hoops. The hoops drove me fucking bananas. It drove me crazy. Um, because I could never get the fabric tight enough. And I know I love you in hand stitchers, but Lord knows, I don't know how you do it. Um, so I'm a, definitely a hoop stitcher and the tighter, the better. And so at the time, this might've been like, I don't know, circa 2000, maybe 2002. Um, so like sometime what feels like a hundred years ago. Um, but the, the hoops that they offered then like where you're just regular, they're your regular hoops. And I it used to drive me crazy because they'd come loose and they, like I just could never find ones that really worked for me. So uh, I kind of went in and out of it. And also the patterns, like there were your typical dimensions kit kits and stuff like that. And I don't think I really knew um, like the array of designers that were out there. And maybe they were out there then and maybe not. I think a lot of the companies that I follow now are newer. Um, and so, yeah, I kind of, it kind of evolved from like my grandma teaching me and showing me and doing a couple dimensions kits when I was younger. And then all of a sudden, I don't know what got me started, but back in 2015 or 2016, um, I, I think the first, the first chart that I started was a frosted pumpkin st stitchery chart. And I'll, I'll go grab it off the wall in a second. I'll show it to you. But, um, I just fell in love with it. It's the woodland sampler. And I was like, wow, this is really cute. And I just didn't know that you could buy fabric separately, that you could buy threads separately, that you could change and adjust patterns if you wanted to. Like, I, I didn't have any idea that any of that was a thing. So once I found Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery, I started that Woodland Sampler and then it was just, um, the rest is kind of history. And for those of you who have a large stash, uh, Kristen, Danny, uh, Bonnie, Rebecca, I'm looking at you guys. <laughs> For you guys who, uh, who have a huge stash, you kind of just know how it starts to accumulate. And uh, I can officially say, probably like most of you watching this, that I do not have enough lifespan left to stitch the things that are in my stash. And I'm totally cool with that. I like having a variety of stuff. Um, so yeah, anyways, kind of started from Frosted Pumpkin Citry Woodland Sampler and just snowballed from there. Um, and so now here we are. So, uh, just a little bit of background about, um, Chelsea Bun. So in, I want to say 2019, um, maybe a little bit earlier, but I think it's 2019 uh, the years are like a blur now with everything going on. But I think it's 2019, I started Chelsea Bun's cross stitch. Um, and I started selling scissors cause I love, I don't know about you, you guys. Like I think, I think we're all kind of collectors if you will so i started chelsea buns cross stitch with it, like a few pairs of scissors and then it just the world opened up to me um 
and I found some great suppliers and I started to stock more styles and you guys loved it and then it kind of just went from there and then uh, life kind of has a funny way of diverting you sometimes so um, a couple significant changes. Um, I had started a needlework store that you guys could come and see in person. And then I, um, I ended up moving. So that, that store was very short lived and it was beautiful while it lasted. Um, but not having that anymore has actually been the, the best thing to happen. Um, and so now we're just getting started and I have, um, pulled back the number of SKUs that I, um, that I'm going to offer. So I, and focus pretty much strictly on scissors, uh, and tension hoops, and I'll explain that in a second. Um, but yeah, so one thing kind of led to another, and I'm just so thrilled to be here with all of you. I, I, I love this craft. I think it's probably one of the best things that ever happened to me. And uh, so yeah, this video is just a little bit more about me. On the tension hoop thing, so like I said, when I first started stitching again, I didn't realize that you could kind of pick your own stuff, and uh, accessories had come so far along and there's all these super helpful aids and stands and like everything that wasn't available before was then available and it made my life so much easier which made stitching so much more enjoyable. Um, one of the biggest things that made a difference were the tension hoops um, that we sell. The f my first exposure to tension hoops was actually a different brand and they were okay, um, like the concept was there and they were okay, but they weren't like, they weren't the best best. And so finally I found a place to source what I would consider the best, they're tension hoops from Nurge. They keep your fabric super tight. Um, I've never have any, had any issues with damage of stitches. Some people have said that um, it's so tight and if you leave your, your, your pattern, like your stitching in the hoop, it starts to um, not damage the stitches, but like move them around and stuff like that. I've never had an issue with that whatsoever. And those tension hoops, um, make my life so much easier. They've made it so much more enjoyable. The fabric's taut, it makes my, it makes my stitching much more even. Um, so yeah, they've been a game changer. Um, we sell them on the site. I'll drop a link in the, in the description below if you're interested. They come in three different sizes and they've been, like I said, just the most massive game changer. Um, I also have a stand and I'll have to look up who it's from. I wanna say they're from Alberta, but I will look up. Um, you'll see my Chatelaine's in it right now. Um, that stand has also been a huge game changer for me. I actually have two, two types of stands. One's a, um, one's a floor stand that converts into a lap stand and then one's just a lap stand. I do not remember where the other one is from either. So maybe in another video after I figure that out, um, I'll get back to you. But like I said, I guess my whole point in saying all this is that tools have changed um, so significantly that there is something for everyone. And if some part of your stitching is uncomfortable, there is a way to fix it. So um, don't let not having the right accessory deter you from uh, digging into some projects that you've wanted to dig into. Um, it makes all the difference. So I'm gonna grab a couple projects and then I will be right back right here to show you kind of uh, the state of the nation with my stitching. Okay, so I guess we should start um, with the piece that kind of started it all. So I went and got the chart that was on the wall that's a finished piece now. And this is um, Woodland uh, Sampler from Frosted Pumpkin Citry. And I'm very nostalgic about this piece because like I said earlier, it's kind of what got me back into, into stitching and opened up this whole new world uh, this whole new world to me. So this is the finished chart and I paid an arm and a leg to get it framed and I'm very happy with it. But y'all, I will have some tutorials on how to frame stuff a little bit more affordably um, because it, it's, it's, ex it's expensive. I know you know that um, unless you do your own framing. Um, yeah, so anyways, I paid an arm and a leg. I'm thrilled with it though, with the way that it turned out. I'm very proud. This is it here. Let's try and get a little closer. Pardon the glare. And that's the frame. It's kind of this beautiful like burnished gold and then a matte green um, matte and then a gold, uh, like a, the inner matte is like a, a gold leaf. It's, it's actually really pretty. So yeah, so there's, this is kind of what started it all. Um, and the date, yeah, 2016. So, this, like I said, it um, has a super nostalgic um, and like, I don't know, like I always really wanted to love cross-stitching because my grandma was into it and I thought it was really a great thing for like mental 
um, like great mental health. It keeps you focused, keeps you doing something. You're productive. You're creating something beautiful. Um, but like I said, I kind of was in and out until I figured out that stuff like this existed. And uh, yeah, so I just, I really love this one. It's got, uh, thanks so much to Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery for some of your super cute charts. Um, this is the one that uh, started it all. And this was framed by, um, I'm not sure if you will be able to see this or not. This is done um, in the the Trenton, the Trenton area. There's a lovely lady at uh, Quinny, uh, Quinny Arts and Custom Frames. She did this and it's just, she does some really, really beautiful stuff. Um, and she'll work with you. She has a beautiful shop. So if you ever get a chance and you're in the Trenton area, um, I think it's my friend Kathy, actually. Lovely lady, you are Kathy. I miss you a lot. Um, but it's Kathy actually and, and Danny, I think, who introduced me to this uh, to this framer. And I, I trust her. I trust her with my pieces that I put a lot of time into. So this is very cutesy. Um, I added the little, just because I could, I didn't know you could. I had the little heart in between the two little deer in love in January. Um, yeah. So, and then this one is kind of neat because I, I'm a big believer in, uh, like, I love fairs, like, um, old school, like, town fairs. And so this was um, one of the first pieces that I entered into, I want to say it's the Richmond Fair, which is in the Ottawa area. So I entered into the Richmond Fair. And I think I run a ribbon. I can't remember, but it doesn't really matter. I actually usually glue them to the back, but I think I won a ribbon for this, which was, which was kind of neat. Um, so, yeah. So that's Woodland Sampler. Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. It was super fun. Uh, it was a super fun stitch and I'm really proud of that one. So then we will move on to, I have a bunch of like little miscellaneous stuff here. Um, I used to work with dentists all the time. I don't remember where this chart is from, but it's like the cutest little tooth. <laughs> Let's see if I can, there we go. It's just this like little anime tooth um, so yeah, I used to work in dentistry quite a bit and I, I threw this together relatively quickly and I just thought it was adorable. Um, this one is, so I, I've run events in the past and I really love, um, building, um, a community of stitchers. So like before COVID and, um, when you were still allowed to get together, um, we did a couple stitch days in the Ottawa area, um, before there were restrictions and stuff like that. And so, um, typically you wear name tags, or you can at least, uh, and I thought that it would be nice to have a nice name tag. I never got this finished in time for any of the any of the stitch days that I ran, but I based it off of, I bought this super cute little lanyard. I don't know if you can see, let's see if I can get it to focus. It's got little skulls on it. Anyways, I, it won't focus, but it's super, super cute. And then I just whipped together, um, I put in this gorgeous hand dyed fabric and I whipped together, um, just a little ma oh there we go just a little matching skull and my name um so that i could wear it at retreats and stuff like that when we do uh in-person stuff so that was super cute it's not a chart i sell i just kind of whipped it up based on the lanyard and uh i may do like a little finishing tutorial on this one just to show like how i get it into badge format or whatever um just in case you want to throw together a little name tag for some of the in-person stitching events that you do so that was kind of cute. Feels like I feels like I stitched that like 700 years ago. Um, and then, so this one's been on my pile my pile for a very long time. Um, this is, oh god, I think it's I want to say it's the village of Hawk Run Hollow. And uh, at the when I bought it, I don't think I realized how big it was. And this one I think was started same circa like. Very shortly after I, I learned the frosted pumpkin stitchery and stuff was a thing. I would say this probably doesn't fall into my typical style of stitching, but it's a beautiful piece and I love this stuff. Um, I love the stuff that they offer. Um, it's very easy stitch. Um, this is I'm pretty sure is stitched on 14 count Ada. Um, so yeah, I'll kind of show you what I have so far. The first, the first block is finished and I'm in the middle of the second block. And the second block up here, the name um, is changed. If, if you've stitched this, you'll notice. Um, it should be uh, the um, Reverend Isaiah Cook. But at the time of my life, when I started stitching this, bro the name Brody had some importance to me. 
So I changed that, and but I love I love this piece. It's kind of like a like a core piece that I come back to every once in a while, and it's rather large, like the whole piece of fabric. I'd have to check the dimensions, but when I unfold the whole thing, like this is like it's large. So there's I think there's twelve blocks, uh, twelve blocks that are part of this chart. So that's a really fun, easy stitch. It's very beautifully put together. Um, has a kind of old school feel to it. I don't have anything else like it um, really started like this type of um, style. Uh, but yeah, so that's kind of a, a core one that I always come back to from time to time. And they have a lot of really cute stitches actually um, in this series. But yeah, big fan. Um, I got into designing, um, I fell in love with black work and black work style stuff. Um, so I started um, designing my own series just because I loved how simple and like how simple and effective it was when you put a single strand of color on top of a, a plain fabric. So I really fell in love with that design process and I haven't designed in a little while and um, I'm hoping to, I'm like, I'm in the middle of getting back to all of that right now. So hopefully we'll have some new stuff shortly. But this is um, from my um, uh, Blackwork Brilliance collection is what I called it. And this one's called Stained Glass Garden. So I wanted to test it, like I wanted to test it and make sure um, the directions made sense and that the, the chart was relatively easy to, relatively easy to read. I'm not finished yet, but I made it relatively far and I stitched on the smallest piece of fabric. I should stitch it on a bigger piece of fabric, but it should be just enough. Like I used a, I salvaged a really beautiful piece of uh, even weave. And um, so this is what I have so far. So yeah, so it's coming along really nicely. I'm hoping to make um, more progress on that shortly. And then I'm gonna do a finishing video, um, a finishing video on this to kind of show, and it'll be in a square frame. I'll find, um, I like to find, uh, fr honestly, frames and mats at Valley Village, um, cause it's way more affordable. And the reality is like, I'm, I, I'll only spend the money on framing stuff that's like, that I spend hundreds of hours on now, but some of the little stuff like this, I like to find creative ways to do demos that kind of can save everybody a little bit of money um, and still really look beautiful at the end. And you can always get, um, what I typically do is like for this one, I'll end up finding probably um, just a really pretty um, square frame. And then um, it's, it's really relatively easy to finish. Um, on your own and slip it in the frame. And the biggest thing is, is if the, if the mat, if the mat doesn't um, fit whatever project, so say you're Valley Village and for like five bucks or 10 bucks, you can get this gorgeous frame and mat, but the mat doesn't really fit perfectly. You can always go to um, Michael's or whatever, a framing place. It's way cheaper to get a mat cut to fit the chart that you stitch as opposed to do, doing the whole frame thing and all that. So usually can you get the frame and the glass um, and then you just pay a little bit of money to get, um, the mat cut. So that's kind of like where I, the space that I live in, in terms of the tutorials and stuff that I want to be focusing on is just to stay a little cost conscious because Lord knows we, I'm like, I just am not willing to pay hundreds of dollars to frame every single piece that I stitch. I would go broke. So anyways, hopefully that's of use. As soon as this is finished, I'll do a little tutorial on this and then, uh, and then we can go from there. So I'm gonna grab a couple of the bigger pieces here and uh, then I'll show you where I'm at and one debacle that I have and maybe you guys can give me some opinions in the comments. So I'll be back in just a sec. Great. Okay, so, so anybody who knows me um, in the stitching world knows that I've been working on a Mirabilia essentially the entire time I've gotten back into stitching. So I wanna say this one started 2016. I'm pretty sure, and I'm horrified that it's taken me this long, and I'll, but I'll explain to you why. So first of all, I'll show you the lap stand that I have it in. Um, like I said, I can't, I can't remember where this is from, but I will find it. I know a good friend who still knows, um, but this is what it looks like. Um, and it's super convenient, like it's small enough, it just kind of sits right on top, but it holds your fabric tight enough. And um, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna pull this chart out real quick. If you're a Mirabilia fan, you'll already know you'll already know which chart this is. Um, but yeah, I'll get, <laughs> so where do I start? Um, this chart is sort of become my nemesis. So for the chart is uh, at the Met, it's from Mirabilia. 
and it's sort of become my nemesis because I made the decision a long time ago to uh, do the skin over one. I had seen it done by some people like all over the place on some of the Mirabilo for, um, Facebook groups and stuff like that. And I was like, wow, that looks really classy. Now, the first thing is when I first started stitching again, I didn't realize the difference between linen and even weave. Um, I am not, I'm not a fan of linen. I sold all my linen when I purged out um, some of my own personal stash right before I moved. Um, I just, I think it's truly beautiful um, for people that love to stitch it and it has like a, just it has a lovely look to it, but from a like an actual stitching perspective, I can't I can't handle stitching on it. I'm I like when the weave is exactly the same. Um, so I would take even weave over anything, and then I would go to Ada, and then I would stitch on linen. So it makes this project doubly hard because not only did I decide to do the skin one over one, I also started this on linen. But I'm just like a rabid dog now. I won't like I I don't want to give up because I'm way too far invested in the piece. So I'll show you what I have done so far. It's, it's large. So this is the top kind of trellis and stuff like that. And I'll see if I can get a little closer for you. So I have a lot in, invested in this um, from a time perspective. But admittedly, um, and even the quality of the over one stitching, like I'm not like I'm not great on this specific fabric. I can make a million excuses as to why I I just really struggle going back to it from time to time. And then sometimes I'll just dig in. I think if I did the whole thing over one, um, sorry, over over two, it wouldn't have been. I'll see if I can get. It probably looks okay from like from this far away, but when you really like when you really look at it, I find the one over one skin just doesn't, doesn't look as even as it should, and probably half of that's my stitching and half of that's the linen. Um, but I'm not willing to give up. I am going to make progress on this, and this is a perfect example of something that I will have invested so many years in. Um, that when it's finished, I'm going to just spend as much money as I need to to get this framed because it will be an attestation to perseverance at its, at its finest and not giving up when you make a decision that it's a huge pain in the ass, um, like over one skin. So I recommend over one skin because it's so beautiful, but for me personally, I either wouldn't do it again because it's not worth the time investment, or if I did it again, I would at least make sure that the piece wasn't on linen, it was on even weave. So that's my current mirabilia situation um it's a beautiful chart the colors are lovely um she's super super gorgeous and i like like i literally can't wait to get to the beating part because then i then i will feel like it was all worth it um but right now i struggle a little bit with picking it up um just just because of that, because of that specific reason and i know that all my friends who are watching this who know me well and who've seen this thing come out at retreats time and time again knows that I've struggled with the over one like ever since I decided to do it. So that's my Mirabilia at the Met story. So we'll keep plugging away on that. Um, okay, now, now we'll move on to, this is a bit big. So this is my other, this is the, my favorite stand I have ever purchased. I was lucky enough to purchase it secondhand. So I, I like, it's a lot of money up front. Um, but again, I can see why, like it's totally worth it. It's probably the most stable stand I've ever used. It's also, also huge so for projects like Chatelaine's. Um, it gives you enough space, keeps your fabric super taut, like it's totally worth it. Um, I have it in the, the lap format right now. The floor stand is nice, but you have to have the right kind of seating set up so that you can slide it in under your chair. And I, we just don't have that here. Um, so the lap stand is just a bit more comfortable once I get it propped up. So this is what it looks like. It's huge because the chart is huge. One side, two side, that's what it looks like. And this in the middle is the begin, beginning of um, Alpine Seasons. I think it's called Alpine Seasons Garden Mandela. It's like, um, it reminds me of an Austrian an Austrian scene in the mountains. Like it's beautiful, that cottage in the middle is stunning. Um, 
but yet again, yet again, um, the center where the cottage is, right below it, calls for um, over one stitching in like the flower garden. And the chart that I have um, for that specific one was paper. And it, personally, it is impossible to read the over one. So I did the best I could. And the stitching quality, I think, turned out really nice, but the colors are all messed up because I couldn't read the chart. So now, in the middle of that one, um, it's really bothering me that the flowers are kind of not the way that they're supposed to be. And I just, I couldn't, <laughs> at the time I said I couldn't justify paying another, like paying again to get the electronic cart, uh, electronic copy, but just know this, that if you buy a Chatelaine, I personally would never buy a paper copy again because the quality on the paper is not, like even when it's blown up, I can't, I can't see the symbols. Um, so I would buy an electronic copy, hopefully to eliminate that. I don't own an electronic Chatelaine copy, so I'm just making an assumption that it's cleaner and that you can zoom in so you can see better so that this kind of doesn't happen. So now I have all this time invested in like the center cottage piece and I'm still trying to figure out um, like if it bothers me enough that I just want to scrap it and I don't, like, I don't know if mentally I can start this over yet. Um, so I'm just kind of in the process of trying to figure out, like, is it worth starting over? Is any, would anybody even notice? Um, but you know, we all, I don't know if you're the same, but I'll do this comparison thing where I'll go and I'll see all the Alpine Seasons mandalas that are done and the garden looks perfect and the flowers look intact. And so then I automatically think that the only thing that somebody's gonna look at um, when when they see my version is that the flat, like why are the flowers missing petals and why are the colors messed up? So again, it's one of those things like we're the, um, we're our worst own worst critics. I don't think anybody would probably even notice, but I just need to admit to myself whether or not I think it's going to bother me enough that it's going to be an issue or do I just push through and keep going? But it's a beautiful piece. The colors are incredible. The thread, the threads that are used are incredible. Um, so, so far so good. And I just need to make some decisions on whether or not, um, I'm going to keep going. So I'm gonna grab a couple more projects from the mystery box over here and I will be right back. Man, I have, a, I have a lot of stuff started and I'm just starting to realize, like I know that a lot of you can relate, but I have a lot of stuff started that I don't think I realized, um, I don't think I realized how much. But anyways, whatever, it's super fun. I'm all about having an array of projects to pick from and I bet you anything that a lot of you can, uh, like I said, relate to this. Um, so now moving on. This is one of my favorite stitches ever. Um, my dear friend, um, Pamela Kellogg, who has the Colorful Cat series, she's done such a lovely job with these patterns. They're a super fun, easy stitch. The colorways are lovely. Um, this one is done on an opalescent fabric that's hand dyed. This is lemonade. So this is the start. Just beautiful, like just beautiful. The colors are amazing. Every time I stitch it, it makes me super happy. Um, it looks wonderful on this hand dyed fabric. So yeah, Pamela Kellogg, love your love you to bits, and your your charts are just um, your charts are just a super fun easy stitch. So I'm a big fan of that one. And then, so this is one. Um, so I don't know how I would explain this one. So this is a part. Uh, this is a piece that I designed, and I was kind of like in an ombre mood. Um, and the chart's not finished. So I'm kind of on the fence about what to do with it, but I, but I really, like, I love the way that it turned out. I just need to figure out what colors I use because this was a while ago. Um, and I would say that, like, I, I, wouldn't, I, I wouldn't say that this is a typical uh, um, black work project. It's more like a long stitch project. So anybody who's done black work before will know, like, or backstitch that, like, the easiest, the easiest way to do it is to do over one or maybe over, over two. Um, but once you get confusing where it's like two stitches over, three stitches up, I would consider that more long stitch, but there are designs that I want to produce that just don't, um, that just don't work where it's like one over one up or this is a little bit hard to explain, but you see what I mean when I see the, show you the chart. So this is it. It's like um, a combination of what I would say long stitch because some of those are over like quite a few, 
like quite a few sets of stitches. But I couldn't get the like the dynamic that I wanted on the like choppy side of the feather without being more blatant about how far over and up I went with the stitches. So, um, so yeah, so I'm on the fence on whether or not to release this one, but I, I think it turned out like it's really lovely. It's very different. The ombre turned out really lovely. There's some opalescent filaments in there. Um, but yeah, it's just a little more challenging because it's not like over one stitch, then up one stitch and so on and so forth. It's, it's more like a long stitch concept. Um, but I think it turned out great. And it, so this will, if, if nothing else, this will make a cute little um, tutorial project. I'll show you how I finish it. Um, I'm not exactly sure I'm gonna do that yet, but, but yeah, so that'll be a fun little project. Um, and I just think that in the instructions that I do when I do design, um, I'll need to be uh, more clear about like, is it traditional back, like black work slash backstitch? Or is it, you know, are there a lot of long stitches in there that involve you to count? Um, same thing, uh, I would say that most of the charts that I'm done are not, you could do them on Ada, but it would be almost impossible because there's a lot of times where it would be like an even weave, like three over five up, for instance. Um, so it's just more challenging because with, with Ada, you'd have to pierce through a lot of fabric and it might, like it won't look as good as if you, you did it on even weave or linen. Um, so I think from like a setting the right expectation uh, perspective for the stitch, like I think that's really important. And so it's on the top of my mind and I will make sure to, um, to try and do a good job of explaining like what's involved when I do release stuff like that. Um, this next one, I'm super excited about this. This has also been a long time coming. Um, this is my, so like I love designing bookmarks because they're super easy to stitch and I love finishing them. And if you're like me and you love a good book, um, then they're just super handy um, and meaningful. So I designed a winter bookmark for to follow the fall one that I designed years ago, two years ago maybe, 2019, so three now. Um, so this is the beginning of that. Let me see if I can get it to, there we go. Yeah, so little penguins and some little wreaths. So it's got a winter kind of seasonal feel to it. So the four bookmarks I'll start with, we'll just, I'll finish off the seasons and then I'll probably do a bunch of other stuff like Halloween and Valentine's Day. Um, but yeah, this is, this has turned out to be a really cute stitch. Um, I like them because they're quick and like I said, they're kind of utilitarian. Um, this one, and I think the other one are uh, 35 wide by 119 high. So design area 2.36 inches wide and then 8.36 inches high. It's a stitch count of 33 by 117. So anyways, I'm hoping to finish this. Um, it's on the top of my list because I got some really great feedback from the seasonal, the fall bookmark that I did. Um, and like I said, they're just really easy stitches and super utilitarian. You can just throw them in a book when you're done. So yeah, there's that. Um, this next one, yes, ink circles. Tracy Horner, your stuff is amazing. Um, so this is done on a, I wanna say raspberry jobeline. Yeah, so this one started on 32 count raspberry jobeline and I, like, I love the way that it's turning out. So this, so this chart is called red velvet. And I just think it's the most beautiful, it's just the most beautiful stitch. I'm using DMC 48, which is a variegated kind of like, it's right there, sort of see, uh, variegated. And it, it's turning out, um, like I just love the kind of highs and lows of the, so yeah, big fan. I think that's going to be really beautiful when it's finished. Um, again, I, it's a, it should have been a, sor a short stitch, but um, when you have 847,000 projects, I don't really know if anything is a short stitch, um, except for those whippersnappers out there that can whip charts off <laughs> like nothing, but that's not me. I take breaks and stuff and go do some other stuff in life. And so I'm not the most, um, I'm not the quickest stitcher around. So yeah, so that's a part of the collection too. I, Tracy Horner, Red Velvet is lovely. Um, 
it's been a super fun stitch. I really love that on those charts, you don't have to think about, um, you don't have to think about the colors. Like you, if you want a variegated, that's great. Um, I also um, have stitched some of her stuff just on a plain fabric with a plain DMC and it turns out just lovely. So it's, you don't have to think about switching thread all the time. And like, it's a very soothing stitch because you're not constantly switching out colors. You don't really have to pay attention to symbols. Like it's, it's just a lovely change of pace when you're used to stitching more complicated stuff. Um, then, I am not gonna remember what this chart what this chart is called. You're gonna tell me. It's Joan Elliott. And I you'll know right away. So I'm Canadian, obviously. Um, this is stitched on the O Canada fabric, which is from I also can't remember right now at the top. Fabric flare called O O Canada Maple. And so it's got the um the uh say the theme song for the Canadian national anthem the theme song for Canada wow um on it and so I started using this as a base so this is I've just started at the bottom so when she comes up I should see the top um she's pretty large but you had a little bear in there and a little beaver and a little fox and some flowers and just a really fun beautiful stitch um and I'm sure in the comments section, you're all gonna remind me uh, what the name of this chart is, but it's one of my favorite stitches. The colorways are really beautiful. Um, this fabric is really lovely to stitch on. It's kind of neat because it's got the maple leaves in the background along with the national anthem. So that's all, that's all kind of really fun. And so I'm a big fan. Uh, and then, I don't remember where I saw this originally, but I fell in love with it. Um, it's copyrighted from 2006, six, A Stitcher's Hands. The name of the chart is Beloved. I don't think I have a complete, I don't have a complete um, picture of what the finish looks like, but I started, um, I started stitching it on, so this is 32 count Lugana in shale with a purple, uh, I have the thread here somewhere. It's like a purplish thread. So is this right? Yeah. So this is a little angel's legs. So that's the start of it. It's maybe one of the most beautiful patterns I've ever seen. Like I said, I don't remember where I saw it originally. I think somebody was stitching it at a retreat that I went to and I just couldn't, I couldn't get over how, um, how beautiful it was. It's a single color on this kind of like moody purple fabric, the shale. So again, super easy stitch. You don't really have to think about swapping colors. Um, which from time to time I really like. So that's kind of been like a core staple in my collection for a little while. And I will keep going on that. I'm gonna dig back into that box and see what else I can find. And I will be right back. Um, I found this little guy. I haven't started this little guy yet, but um, it has a little scissors on it, which is obviously pretty meaningful to me. Um, that's the little scissors charm. It just says love to stitch. So this is on my list of um, things to do and it's so small that ideally it shouldn't take me too long <laughs> too long um, So as soon as that's finished, I'll do like a little finishing tutorial on um, Maybe finding a frame at Valley Village and how I how I pin it and uh, and stick it in the frame uh, in a really cost-effective way So that's on my list of things to do it's super cute um, This is one of my favorite charts. I think I've ever started stitching um, this is on 28 count, uh, whoops. Oh, goodness me. 28 count uh, opalescent Lugana. It's called, I don't know if I have a name. No. However, you may know it when you see it. It's essentially um, a tribal, a tribal horse with the most, so, I don't know if you can see, but all the blue, all the blue is her mane. And then this is like her, the bridal work. And then this is her eye. So she, she'll come down like this. Um, but really gorgeous opalescent fabric. I'm not sure if you can kind of see, um, but the colorways are really gorgeous. Again, a super, a super easy stitch. This is on, like I said, I think what, 28 count Lugana opalescent. Beautiful colors, super fun to stitch. 
I would like to dig back into that one um, as soon as I can because I think that's one of those pieces like it's hard like I love all the stuff that I stitch or I wouldn't stitch it but there are obviously certain favorites where like the colorways are done right and the the, the fabric just comes together and it turns out um, it just seems to turn out beautifully so I'm excited to get this one finished and framed uh, and that will hang in our house for sure because it's just super gorgeous so I'm excited to excited to continue on that one and then I have kitted Miss Pamela Kellogg um, what is the name of this one I think this is gingerbread which she originally yes mm, Pamela was kind enough to originally design gingerbread for my shop. That was until I decided to stop selling charts, so now you can get this anywhere. Um, but the colorways are just, like just absolutely gorgeous. Now, this is the cool part, check this out. Remember where this fabric came from, but this is all the DMC thread in it. Focus, 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 focus. Okay, well, it's gonna focus right now, however, on this like opalescent kind of green and purple fabric. So I think those colors on that fabric, like as soon as I kitted this, this is 30, uh, 32 count opal Lugana. That seems to be a favorite of mine, 28 or 32 count Lugana. Um, but I think those colors together like I think it'll just be beautiful so I'm I'm super excited to make a start on that it's just sitting in the to-go pile again beautiful colorways if you haven't stitched some of her stuff please go check her out um, you can find her at kitty uh, kitty and me designs um, there's a great Facebook group too I think it's called fans of kitty and me designs so she's a lovely human support her her stuff's beautiful she supports little shops by doing ex exclusives for um, little shops as a way to drive traffic. So overall, just a super lovely thing to do. And then I guess last one for today, um, st started as a, um, a mystery stitch along. And then I just couldn't, I couldn't keep up. I like, I tried my damnedest. Um, I want to say it's Lenart. Yeah, Lenart Secret Stitch Along. And the number on it is PN0, so pattern 0185890. And so these are the, this is the kind of the, I don't know if you can really see the colorways. It's like brown blues. <clears throat> and this was the start that I had. And so at the time I didn't know that this chart is now released. And I think it's two herons. I could, I'm not up to speed on my bird knowledge, but it's two um, kind of intermingling herons. The colorways are just lovely. Again, super easy stitch on Ada. Really, really beautiful kit. I have a few of their kits, um, just like I said, kind of sitting in the pending pile. Um, so I will go back to this. It's definitely, now that I've seen the whole thing, like I would have kept going anyways, because the, col so the colors are really calming and beautiful. Um, but now after the pattern was fully released, like it's totally worth it. It's just lovely. So yeah, that is not nearly all of the stuff that I have in this little mystery box, but I have felt like I've talked for a very long time about the stuff that I do currently have on the go. Um, if you have questions or there's stuff that you wanna see, if you wanna see scissors, if you wanna see, I have gotten the most feedback on um, the tutorials that I've done, like the cross stitch bookmark one, um, I guess was really helpful to people and that's super cool. Um, so it is my plan to continue to put out kind of educational content so that like, if you're looking for a relatively easy way to finish something, a relatively cost effective way to finish something, those are the tutorials that I'd like to keep coming. Um, we can all use great ideas on how to finish stuff and, um, uh, Sometimes you just haven't seen, you haven't seen a certain finish and you wanna know how to do it. So yeah, anyways, it's my goal to continue to um, provide content like that. If there's a certain tutorial or educational piece that you think would be really helpful, please drop it in the comments below. Um, and yeah, so this would be Floss Tube episode number one and I 
hope that you've enjoyed your time here and uh, don't hesitate to say hello. You can always reach me at hello at chelseabuns.ca. You can shoot me a message on Instagram at chelseabunscrossstitch. Um, I would love to talk to any of you about anything. I am a forever stitcher. And like I said, at the beginning of this video, I have more stash, uh, like my stash will outlast my lifetime. I'm sure we can all, um, I'm sure we can all commiserate kind of with that. So I hope you had a great time and I will see you next time.